this investigation, uh, we explored the misconception had by children aged around six, five to six, and uh, their idea that a slug is a snail without a shell. Some of their ideas that they expressed was um, a, a slug is a snail without a shell because they perceived that shells were a little bit like clothes and the snail could actually take it on and off um, as it chose. Others um, w w sort of just had the idea, well, they're nearly the same, so they are actually the same animal. Um, others had the idea that the snail might grow and therefore if the shell didn't grow with the animal, um, they would need to essentially, I suppose, move out of their shell. Others thought that the shell just fell off and the snail then turned into a slug. Um, other ideas were the shell's just too heavy and so the snail decided to become a slug. We had a discussion about how we could find out whether a slug is a snail without a shell and the group um, decided that the best way to do that would be to have a close look at slugs and snails in the environment. As a group, we had a chat about where we have seen slugs and snails in the past. So the group was sort of able to um, recall when they'd seen snails perhaps going across the footpath, particularly after a rain, um, around leaves of plants, particularly amongst vegetables. Um, we had a story about somebody finding a slug on their lettuce that they bought from the supermarket. Um, and certainly you know, the group had seen them on wet grass and under rocks. The decision was made to have a look at snails and slugs in the vegetable patch. Um, that was sort of um, that decision was made by a group consensus because um, the group was very sure that they'd be able to find some slugs and snails there, um, particularly as slug and snail pellets are not used in that area. So the group was uh, allocated a, a small space, a search space to have a, a look at because the, the search site was actually quite small. So we just took some pictures of where we had seen some slugs and snails so on the leaves and under the leaves. Um, we carefully observed the features of the slugs and the snails and we did that while they were in their natural environment rather than sort of, um, you know, be picking them up and moving them around. Um, it was just easier to do it um, where we actually found them. While, while the group was actually looking at the slugs and snails, I asked them to sort of call out their observations. And so while they were looking and calling out their observations, I just made some, some notes. And then later we took those observations and we put them into a table format. So the types of observations were around, you know, um, whether you know, the slug or the snail had a shell. Um, they noticed the wet body, which both animals had a soft body. They noticed the slime trail, sort of how the animal was moving by squeezing its muscles. Um, they noticed it had eyes on stalks and the colouring was, was fairly similar between the two animals. Um, when, we, uh, when we come back, we, I created a simple pie graph to show um, that we found six similarities and we found one difference. That was what we could observe um, in our field work. So at that point, um, some of the group still felt that a, a slug is a snail without a shell. Um, we did s sort of explore that whole idea of, you know, how could the, the shell actually stay on. Um, we gave it a very gentle nudge just to see what happened to the, the shell, you know, would it, would it fall off. Um, we also observed snails when they were underneath plant leaves and, um, and you know, we found another snail that was sort of crawling over a piece of wood and we noticed that, um, you know, the shell didn't fall off like we would expect, you know, if, um, you know, with gravity. So some of the ideas that the group had about how the shell could possibly stay on was suction. Um, Others thought that the, the slime on, on the animal's body could act like glue and, and I suppose essentially stick the shell onto the body um, while others maintain, well, the shell just, you know, just now just takes it off when it wants to. While we were looking, we did find some, some empty snail shells and so um, we had a discussion about, well, you know, look, look inside the shell, There's, it's, it's hollow, um, what could possibly go into the shell? And we sort of, again, had a look at 
um, one of the snails and we could see that, okay, we can see the, the front part of the body sticking out one side of the shell and we could see the tail or the foot of the snail sticking out the back. So we started to sort of ask questions about you know, what could be in the shell. And, and, and during those discussions, there was sort of the realisation that there was limitations to just using your eyes. Um, and a group, the group made the decision that perhaps we could look on the internet and find out, you know, if we could locate a picture that showed what is actually inside the shell. The only diagrams that we could find were, were I suppose, fairly technical, had more detail on it than was probably required for the age group. Um, but again, we only needed to talk about this in very sort of simplified terms. So the idea that, um, you know, seeing that cross section, the group could see there are actually parts of the snail's body inside the shell. Um, so at that point, um, there was sort of the realization that, um, you know, perhaps a slug is not. Uh, um, a snail without a shell. And, and yes, so the, the diagram clearly showed that part of the snail body is curled up inside the shell. Found a nice simple diagram of a slug um, to sort of show as a comparison. Um, and looking at that image, again, we, we commented on the fact that the slug has a smooth back. Um, Unlike the, the snail, though, there didn't seem to be those extra body parts that could curl up inside the shell. And so the group sort of was able to reflect on what we'd seen in our field work as well as what we could see from the two anatomical diagrams and sort of come to the conclusion that yes, slugs and snails certainly have many similar features. Um, but also that understanding that a slug is not a snail without a shell, that they are different animals. And we made sure that all the slugs and snails were returned to exactly where we found them. <laughs>